Perea Saramun. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul, let us recover our church.
Holy God our Father, as you have sent your only begotten Son to give us true life and happiness, we have come before you in worship today and we ask that you would fill us up to the full. And by your great love and power, we pray that we will have that ample power to overcome the world and would give all the glory to you. We pray that you would accept our worship today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us rely on the precious blood of our Lord and come to God in repentance. Let us join together in repentance to God. Let us 
인간되게 도와주시옵소서 성령께서 죄를 깨닫게 하여 주시고 주 앞에 나간 우리 심령을 받아주시고 함께 하시는 시간 될수 있도록 하나님 주 앞에 우리의 자복하는 아버지 마음을 하나님이 받아주시고 인도하여 주시옵소서 세세 것에 마음을 빼앗기며 하나님의 말씀으로 살지 못했던 모든 것들을 용서 안 받길 원하며 주의 보일의 공로를 의지하여 나가는 우리의 심령에 한렴 은혜와 능력으로 주께서 인도하여 주시옵소서 말씀으로 인도하여 주시고 성령으로 함께하여 주심으로 말미암아 주님을 바라보며 주께서 인도해 주시는 이 시간 우리의 영혼을 하나님이 함께하여 주시고 은혜와 진료로 충만한 시간으로 하나님이 함께하여 주시고 우리의 영혼을 이끌어 주시옵소서 주 앞에 우리의 모든 것을 맡겨드리며 예수 이름으로 기도드리옵나이다 In the name of Jesus we pray in repentance. Amen. Holy living God our Father, in all our bodies, hearts and thoughts, as you protect us and you have loved us in this way, we come upon this day on which we honor the coming of the Holy Spirit and we give you thanks as we rely on the righteousness of our Lord Jesus and confess our sins. We pray that you would accept our worship today and as we consider the lives that we have lived in this past week and instead of accomplishing your will we have followed our own desires selfishness and greed and we did not pray to you we pray that you would forgive us of our sins holy god our father as we live our lives on this earth on this earth we pray that no matter what deceptions try to come our way we pray that we will not be deceived but we will overcome these deceptions but that and that you would also take a strong hold of our hearts and souls we come upon the date of the united church council it is coming closer and closer and as it comes closer we pray that all the necessary preparations will be completed that we can see a quick and swift resolution to all the financial and legal problems that we face in our church. We pray that you will take a powerful hold over the ministry that the Holy, that the overseer is performing for us, that 
through his teachings and his inspiration, we may gain that inspiration from God and that we would overcome all the deceptions of the world. And when the overseer stands to proclaim your words, we pray that you would also anoint the overseer with all the wisdom and power and wisdom that comes from God. We pray that we will hear these words as not coming from man, but as coming from the living God. We pray that we would honor and appreciate these words as coming from you. And we pray that we can also become workers to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Holy God, our Father, as we come before you with our precious offerings of faith, we pray that you would pour out your love and will bless all of your faithful people who give their offerings to you. We pray for those who have given their dedicated offerings to you. We pray that you would bless all those families who have given their offerings, that you would be with them and would bless them, and that you would answer their prayers in many ways. We pray that you would accept all of these devoted families. We pray for all those who have given their tithe offerings to you. We pray that as they continue to offer selves to you in this way, we pray that your unlimited blessings may come upon them. We pray for those who have given their monthly offerings. We pray that since they have given their offerings out of concern and love for the church, we pray that your unlimited blessings and your joy and blessings may come upon them. We pray for those who have given all their offerings of gratitude. We pray that as they have shown their thanksgiving to you this way, we pray they may have all the blessings and love that come from you. We pray for those who have given their offerings in these various ways, that they may continue to give you thanks and glory. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May all those who have given their offerings in these various ways be filled with all the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah.
오늘 하나님의 말씀은 The word of God today is found in John chapter 16 verse 1 to 11. John chapter 16 verse 1 to 11. Let us read this together. All this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asked me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Amen. At this time, Let us pray so that we can receive the precious word of God. And when the overseer proclaims the word of God, let us pray that we can receive all that inspiration coming from God. Now let us pray. Holy God our Father, we pray that on this holy day of the Lord, that you would give us your precious word of life. And I pray that your servant today, when he proclaims your words, that he may lack nothing to proclaim them, but rather that by all of your power and authority and wisdom, that all of your people will hear these words as coming from the Holy Spirit and that they would be strengthened. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit convicts the world. Let us read the sermon outline together. The Holy Spirit condemns and rebukes the world's sin and unrighteousness while on earth. This is how he testifies to Jesus Christ's sovereign authority and glory and his righteousness and truth at the same time. After Jesus resurrected and ascended, the Holy Spirit came to earth in his place as the Advocate. After Pentecost, he comes on disciples of all generations and confers various powers and gifts and guides them in the way. to go while they live for God's calling and testify to the gospel of Christ's salvation. As he is one person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit was the Creator and he gives new life to redeem believers as Almighty God. Yet when he comes on the disciples as the Advocate, he helps them directly on site in their ministry to preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit proclaims and guarantees Christ's righteousness and glory. On this basis, he convicts the hearts of all those who practice unrighteousness and lies and warns them of critical destruction. By doing so, he wants sinners by all means to be saved through repentance, returning to Jesus Christ and obedience. Ultimately, the Holy Spirit helps the ministry of disciples who preach the gospel of salvation. He is the comforter who comforts and encourages the disciples not to lose heart while they endure the burden of persecution and suffering from evildoers. He is the advocate who Jesus promised. Amen. 
Of all the things that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, does, one of his central roles is to convict the world. Once again, one of the various things that the Holy Spirit does, his role is to convict about sin and also to convict sinners. This is the work he does. In this way, the Holy Spirit came to this earth to help apply the work that Jesus Christ had done to all believers. So, the Holy Spirit works on site amongst believers to apply those things that Jesus Christ had achieved. This is why the Holy Spirit asks this question to all believers in Jesus Christ. He asks this question forcefully. What is your perspective about what Jesus Christ has done? So I will, I will discuss about this in length a little later. So in this way, the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit, came to this earth and the way to describe the background detail about this is discussed in length in the book of John. So the Holy Spirit was always with God in the very beginning. But as the Advocate, he began his work as it is described in the book of John. So, since you and I celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on earth, and we deeply respect this and honor the day that He had come on earth, so you and I honor this as Christians, and we understand this as the beginning of the church. We understand that the coming of the Holy Spirit is the very beginning when God has genuinely begun His work proper upon the world. And the background understanding that we need about this, more specifically, is that this is the actual beginning of the work of the church when the Holy Spirit came to the earth. But in the book of John, we can see something very particular and unique about this. When Jesus is speaking to his disciples, he talks in length about the persecution that the disciples will soon face. And this is the opportunity that Jesus speaks to his disciples before the Holy Spirit came. Of course, Jesus was not able to speak to all his disciples about this, but Jesus was concerned about that future persecution that his disciples would face. Because he knew, because Jesus knew that he needed to entrust the duty of preaching the gospel to the disciples. And he knew that without him sending the Holy Spirit to them, he knew that they could not endure. It was not impossible. This is why Jesus promised that he would send the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit, to them so that they would be able to endure the persecution that was to come to them. And they will be greatly encouraged when the Holy Spirit comes among them. Once again, the Church of Christ needs to face persecution for the sake of Christ. In fact, this was the beginning of the times when they would begin to face persecution. Jesus could see this in advance, that they would face these things. And in order to be able to endure this, the Holy Spirit was sent to them as Jesus promised. So, the nation of Israel had escaped out of Egypt. We could say that this was the birth of the nation of Israel. So, Pharaoh was quite like, in a symbolic way, the figure of the devil. 
and the Israelites came out from Egypt. And this symbolizes and has a resemblance the day of Exodus has a resemblance to the coming of the Holy Spirit on the world as well. So when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, we are simultaneously uh, we are simultaneously celebrating the feast of harvest. So this is what Christians do from the heart. So this glory of God was promised to us like this. And in this way, the Holy Spirit works with us so that concerning the future, we can build up this future with God through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is also the advocate, he is the co-worker of, co of God who also works with us. He is the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who had come to help promote the work of God. He, without the Holy Spirit, we could not achieve this work of God on earth as the Church. However, so we must ask, what is the work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does the work to fight against the work of the devil. This is what the Holy Spirit does. But characteristically speaking, specifically speaking, he does the work of testifying about Jesus. So in effect, he is fighting against the work of the devil. So let us talk in part about that role that the, the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit, does. We must at least have a partial and proper understanding about the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit. Of course, the Holy Spirit came from above and he came upon the disciples of Jesus and he comes to provide the power of God and give it to the disciples. And those who are worthy and obedient, the Holy Spirit will come to give them more power. So this is what disciples commonly think. The Holy Spirit comes somewhere from above in order to give power of God to the disciples. But, but there may be some uninterested disciples who just guess ambiguously that the Holy Spirit comes and they do not know who the Holy Spirit really is, yet they still demand that they receive power from God. But we can misunderstand about this. We must be careful because the work that the Holy Spirit does is, ver is various. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the life of God. He has the power to justify people according to his power. And he is the one who essentially gives us eternal life. He helps us. He helps us carry out the work of God. And he will never leave us. And he will help us till the very end. Before we leave this world, He will help us to the very end. And what is the work that the Holy Spirit has come to do? He comes to work as the Advocate so that He can safely bring us, who are the disciples, and safely bring us to the Kingdom of God. So if we consider what we are being taught today, we must understand that this is the key focus the Bible passage that we are focusing on today is the key focus to understand the work that the Holy Spirit does. The core focus of the Holy Spirit's work is found in this very Bible passage we are studying today. So what is it that we are studying? We understand that the Holy Spirit convicts about sin and convicts us so that the work of the devil can be opposed. So let us say that a disciple of Jesus receives power from God. 
of course. There are various types of powers and abilities that we can receive from God. But let us just say that a disciple receives certain power from God. Even though that disciple has received power, if there is sin remaining in that disciple, they will go to hell. They have no choice but to face judgment from God, even though if even though they have received power from God. The way for us to be saved and enter the kingdom of God is to be freed from sin. This is the essence of Christianity. So, this is the inner inclination that we are vulnerable to. It is the inclination that we have on the inside towards sin. We as human beings are inclined to follow and satisfy sin. So, all human beings have the inner natural tendency to follow and perform sin. And so this inner nature that human beings all have is opposed to the nature of God. So let us hold on a second. If we are, if we have the inner nature to commit sin, does that mean that we are opposed to God? That is right. This is why we must go against our own nature. This is a fearful thing the inclination to commit sin. And this is, unfortunately, the inner attitude that we were born with. It is opposed to the nature of God. So, we, by our own inner nature, have no ability to save ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. As human beings, we have no such power. Therefore, we must abandon our inner nature altogether for there to be a chance for us to be saved. So if we embrace our inner sinful nature, there is no way for us to be saved. So it is on this issue that the Holy Spirit had come, concerning the critical issue about sin. He is the one who had, came, who had come according to the grace of Christ. And, the, and Jesus specifically speaks about what the Holy Spirit will come and do. So, the Holy Spirit has come so that he can bring the work of Jesus Christ to full effect and finally accomplish the salvation of God upon the whole world to its full effect. But of course, the Holy Spirit does not walk by himself. But the Holy Spirit works upon the disciples of Christ. The Holy Spirit uses the disciples as instruments. He uses their voices. He uses their lips. He uses the ministry that the disciples perform on the world. The Holy Spirit holds, the Holy Spirit works hand in hand with the disciples and he does his work this way. In this way, our Lord Jesus Christ had promised to send the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit. So this is the story that unfolds before us, step by step. And we can see here that Jesus Christ is, is concerned beforehand about the persecution that the disciples will soon face. Therefore, the Holy Spirit, therefore, the Holy Spirit was, pre was, pre was prepared to be given to them as a device so that they, the disciples, could endure the persecution that they would face in the future. And Jesus promised us, I will promise to send you the Advocate, who is the Holy Spirit, who will be with you forever. Because human beings, by their own inner nature, do not want to be persecuted for the sake of Christ. Because the world will hate the disciples. This is what Jesus said. He said to the disciples, the world will hate you because you testify on behalf of the light. But the world will not accept your message, but they will persecute you, hate you, and oppose you. And because of this reason, Jesus was very concerned about what would happen to the disciples. This is why he sent the Holy Spirit so that they can endure that overwhelming persecution that they would face from the world. 
So just before, just before Jesus will be taken away in those final moments, because Jesus was so concerned on behalf of the disciples, he decided to talk in length about what the Holy Spirit, Spirit would do when he would come. He knew that the Holy Spirit would take his place to be with the disciples forever. And as we can see, the Holy Spirit talks, as we can see, Jesus talks in length about persecution which the disciples would face. So the book of John talks in deep length about persecution. But he does not, he, Jesus does not ask in a sarcastic way to the disciples saying, do you think you can really endure persecution? No, Jesus was genuinely worried for the disciples' sake because he knew that they would face overwhelming persecution from the world. This is why Jesus says, These things I say to you, so when that the day comes, you will not be surprised, and you knew that I warned you beforehand. Therefore, I warn you, I warn you not to stray away or become corrupt. And remember that I warned you about this in advance so that you would not be surprised. So Jesus was deeply concerned that they would be overwhelmed by the persecution that they would face and that they would give up their duty. This is why Jesus spoke in in advance to warn them so that they would not be surprised when this comes and so that they would be able to securely endure this huge persecution. So, the, so Jesus was not just a little bit concerned, but he was hugely concerned and he warned them in advance. He even said that they would be put out of the synagogue. He warned them that the disciples of Jesus would be put out of the synagogue. We may not understand this in modern times, but to basically understand the conclusion, to be put out of the, to be kicked out of the synagogue means that you would be cast out from the rest of society. You would be, you would be cast out. You be, you would be frowned upon. You would be hated. No one would ever do business with you or communicate you with you or socialize with you. So this persecution that the disciples would face was very tricky. But he warned them in advance that they were going to do this for the sake of God's work. So why would the disciples face this work? Why would, why would the disciples face this persecution? For what reason? For what reason did the disciples need to face this persecution? They would be kicked out of the synagogue because the Jews did not know about the Father or did not know about Jesus. So it tells us, it tells us that Jesus spoke these things to them advance, to them in advance, so that the disciples would know that Jesus himself also endured these persecutions before they did. He says, he says, I have told you these things, so when the, the, when the time comes, you remember that I told you of them. So, the exact persecution that Jesus himself faced would soon come upon the disciples in the same way. If we are to be worthy disciples of Jesus, we must face the same persecution that Jesus himself had faced. This is the great and horrendous persecution that the disciples would also face. In essence, Jesus was saying, you have not seen anything yet. The same persecution that I had gone through, you also would go through in the same way. This is the persecution this is the same persecution that I had faced, and you will also face this. I tell you this in advance so that you remember that I told this to you, but I did not say this to you from the beginning. So at the time that Jesus said these things, he it was just before he would be taken away from them. Yet perhaps the disciples... So... 
it was fitting that the Jesus, it was fitting that the Lord Jesus needed to tell these things in advance because the whole world was about to pour out their hatred and was about to pour out their fury upon all the disciples of Jesus. So this is why Jesus needed to tell these things to them in advance. And at this day, the disciples were completely discouraged. They were dismayed. They were very gloomy. They saw that they had no hope. But Jesus says to them, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, Where are you going? The reason why, the, the reason why Jesus said this was a form of conviction, was a form of rebuke. It was a it was a form of convicting them. He was not trying to tell them off, tell them off, but he was trying to remind them that they should not be self-centered. Rather, they sh should be joyful because the Holy Spirit would soon come upon them. So, at this time, the disciples only had this question because they were so concerned only about themselves. They were worried about themselves. This is why Jesus said, Why are you only concerned about your own dismal situation, yet you do not ask, Where I am going? You feel sad at this time, but you should be concerned about where I am going. So Jesus was in, in effect asking them not to be so concerned about their own individual situation, but to consider that Jesus had come to give himself as a sacrifice for all their sakes. Yet the disciples at this time were so concerned with their tiny individual situation. Rather, they should be mindful of what was going to happen to Jesus. This is why Jesus tried to turn things around. He said, I promise to send you the Holy Spirit, who is the Advocate, and I will send him to you. So let us read John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So Jesus promised that he would send the advocate to them. So Jesus was reminding them that he was telling them the truth. It is actually to your benefit. It is actually to your advantage that I go away. Because if I go away, then, then my atonement will truly take its full effect for all of you. The grace of the atonement that I will perform for you will come to full effect when I go away. And there will be one who will come to you. I will not leave you as, orphan, as orphans. Rather, I will come to you through the Advocate who I will send to you. Who is the Advocate? In what way will the Holy Spirit come? So, the Holy Spirit came to the disciples of Jesus as the Advocate. So, the Advocate, or we can say Helper, he is described in this way. This is how the Holy Spirit is described when he comes to the disciples. But this, this term, advocate or helper, is only mentioned in the book of John. But in order to fully understand his role as the advocate, we must fully understand what it is saying in the book of John. Yet you might be quite confused concerning the complexity of what all this means. It might be quite difficult to understand. So, in simple terms, the advocate is like the lawyer in the court of law. Imagine that there is a prosecutor in the court of law and there is also the defense lawyer in the court of law. 
Remember, for example, if there was somebody put on trial and then there was the defense lawyer, the, the Holy Spirit is like the defense lawyer or the advocate. He is like the defense lawyer defending the person on trial because the, the person on trial is so afraid, he, doesn't, he does not know what to do. But that defense lawyer is working very hard and very fiercely to defend the person on trial. He defends us like a lawyer in the court of law. So, yet at the same time, the Holy Spirit also comes to convict the world. So, the Holy Spirit only comes upon believers in Jesus. So, the Holy Spirit does not only come upon believers in Jesus, but the Holy Spirit also has control of the whole world. Once again, the Holy Spirit does not only come upon the believers of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit has firm control over every, uh, every area of the world. The Holy Spirit even has control over those enemies who cause great difficulty against the disciples, who cause great trouble against the Church of Christ and all the enemies of God who are causing all kinds of maliciousness and evil and lies and oppositions against the believers in Jesus. So the, so, so the people in this world, the people in this world act, may, act, may appear godly, but they are maybe very evil on the inside. And this can also be the case with false believers in the church. So, in order that the Holy, S in order that the Church of Christ will not be overwhelmed by the enemies of the church, who will first furiously persecute them and, and oppose them and cause great trouble against the disciples of Jesus, the Holy Spirit has come, so that, so that the power of sin who is also working upon human beings, will be put under control. So this is why the Holy Spirit has come to convict sinners and to convict the sinfulness inside them. So the Holy Spirit does not only dwell inside believers in Jesus, but He is the one who fights against sin. So the Holy Spirit also fights against the sin inside believers. He fights against the sin in our hearts and the sin in our minds. So, so at the same time as being believers in Jesus, we are also sinners. This is the original state in which we were born. There was great danger whenever sin is present, but the Holy Spirit works and fights to oppose and to suppress the power of sin inside any human being. He convicts that sin living inside human beings. This is why the Holy Spirit has come to convict, to convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment as found in John chapter 16 verse 8. So, again, it says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So, we can understand that the Holy Spirit comes as the advocate, as the advocate to convict the world in regard to sin and in regard to righteousness and in regard to judgment. This is not a... This is not a small rebuke. This is convicting the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. So, the Holy Spirit does this by proclaiming 
by proclaiming the gospel and making all humans aware of the danger of sin that dwells in them. So what is the meaning of this? The Holy Spirit proclaims the presence and danger of sin that is potentially present in all human beings. He makes everyone aware of the presence of sin, that sin is in them, and he warns them about how dangerous sin is. So the Bible also tells this to us. If anybody judges by mere outward appearance, this itself is sin, and the law condemns you as a sinner. So, so the Holy Spirit condemns uh, condemns about sin. He, he warns about the dangerousness of sin and he declares that sin is evil and it is potentially present in all human beings. So those who are convicted by the Holy Spirit like this, those who are convicted this way should recognize that they have been convicted by the Holy Spirit and when they receive this rebuke and conviction from the Holy Spirit, they should understand about the dangerousness of sin. They should understand how dangerous sin is and how sin can potentially lead them to go to hell. Therefore, they must understand the danger of how how horrendous it will be if we go to hell and this is the way that the Holy Spirit convicts us and makes us aware of the presence of sin in us. Therefore, if we understand all this, we will fear. We will fear God and we will hate sin. We will be convicted deep in the consciousness of our hearts. So when, so if we look at the Bible and we see how in the book of Acts, Simon Peter had preached the gospel for the very first time to the Jews, then the Bible tells us that they, that they, the Jews, were convicted from the heart and then they asked Simon Peter, brothers, what shall we do? So in this way, the Jews were aware by the preaching of Simon Peter of the presence of sin in their hearts and how evil they were. He, Simon Peter, had declared that sin was present in all of them, despite the fact that they tried to obey the law of Moses. This is why the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, not only, con not only testifies to Jesus Christ, but he also convicts believers and unbelievers alike about the presence of sin. Because the Holy Spirit stands in judgment against us to declare that sin is present and it is dangerous. But this is, but the Holy Spirit does not convict us just to destroy us, but rather to lead us to repentance so that we can be saved. But the Bible tells us that people of the world hate this message. They don't want to. They don't want to embrace this message about the dangers of sin, but they rather want to run away from the light. But, but, but there are many inclusive, there are many inclusive things found in the rebuke of the Holy Spirit. Rather, God, God asks us that we become aware of the danger of sin and how this can potentially lead us to go to hell. He asks us to understand the state that we are in, that sin is among us, and the sin has the potential to bring us into hell. So, the Holy Spirit has this role of convicting us concerning the sin that is on the inside. So, we 
must not be insensitive to this rebuke that comes by the Holy Spirit. Because if we are insensitive to this conviction of the Holy Spirit, and if we are numb to it, and we are senseless to it, this can be very dangerous. We must be very sensitive to the consciousness of our hearts. We must, we must keep our consciences clear. We must keep our consciences pure. But if we reject the guilt in our consciences, if we disregard it, then we will be, it will be as if our consciences are seared as with a hot iron. We are completely senseless, senseless to the guilt of our hearts. This means that we have no ch chance for eternal life. This is why the Holy Spirit has come to rebuke the world in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. He has come to sufficiently rebuke the world so that the world will not be destroyed, but will come back to God in repentance and be saved. So, this is, this is in a way, for us to change our attitudes about sin and our attitudes about righteousness and our attitudes about about judgment the holy spirit proclaims the presence of sin the prevalence of sin everywhere and how dangerous it is so that we do not go astray and become corrupt but rather we turn back to god in repentance because sin has the potential to destroy the whole world and the Holy Spirit has come to fight against the effects of sin so that we are not destroyed, but we will be saved. So the Holy Spirit has come to achieve many things. But concerning this role, he knew, the Holy Spirit knows that he must work upon the disciples and he must work upon the disciples so the disciples would preach the gospel to the whole world. So the Holy Spirit does work upon the disciples of the Holy, the disciples of Jesus. Yet he also works upon every area of the world to uncover sin, to show that sin is present and how dangerous it is. So this, in this way, this message from Jesus is very encouraging to the disciples. They will not be alone. They will not be orphans. Rather, the Holy Spirit will be with them forever. So God is with them forever. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit from God the Father, and the Holy Spirit will come upon the disciples. And when the Holy Spirit come, comes, he comes in place of Jesus as the advocate for all disciples. He has come to complete the work that Jesus entrusted to us. So this is... This is the prevailing warning about how dangerous sin is. So Jesus also says that the Holy Spirit comes to convict in regard to judgment. Uh, that is, in regard to righteousness. So there will be some believers who claim, who claim, oh, I go to church every week. This will perfectly entitle me to go to heaven, right? I'm a member of this church. Doesn't that mean I'm good enough? On what proof do you have that you have gone that you will go to heaven? Because I'm a member of this church. But this is not right. God is looking at the sincerity of your hearts. And the sincerity sincerity in your heart will reflect whether you will be worthy of going to heaven or not. Those who keep the commands of God very faithfully are the true believers in Jesus and they will genuinely go to the kingdom of God. But those who pretend to be believers yet they do not remain faithful to those commands of God, they are only pretenders in Jesus and they will not be worthy of the kingdom of God. On the other hand, there are true believers who give their lives and efforts and all their efforts to be faithful to the commands of God. God will sincere the sincerity of these believers 
and He will help them through the Holy Spirit. Everyone can be forgiven through Jesus. But who are those who cannot be forgiven? Those who deliberately disobey the commands of God, they cannot be forgiven. Their actions show that they are not believers, and those who do not believe will be destroyed. Jesus says to us, Jesus says to us, although, although I have told you these things so clearly, yet there are some of you who will not believe, and therefore you will not be saved. So, we are talking about that perspective, that perspective about Jesus, uh, that perspective of why Jesus had come. We are those who should follow Jesus. We should abandon our former nature and we should live as born again, crea born again creations of God. So, when the Holy Spirit rebukes about sin, he, he does that critical work which decides whether we are worthy of going to heaven or, or whether we are worthy of going to hell. So this is how the Holy Spirit works. He works to convict us in our hearts, to make us aware of the grave, grave and terrible sin in our hearts so that we are aware of it and we will, we will repent back to God. So, those, so, if we are selective in our faith, or we are selective of what we should believe, or what we should obey, we are not genuine believers. Because, because those who do not accept the fact that the Holy Spirit had come to convict the world, they remain in condemnation. So, the Holy Spirit has come to those who are invited to receive the love of God. But there are still people that can be still sitting on the fence. They have not quite decided whether they will accept the Holy Spirit or not. Although they have been invited to accept the love of God, yet they are still on the fence. People who are still on the fence have not truly received the love of God. They are showing by their indecisiveness that they have not accepted the love of God. We can see, we can see, we can see the state of their hearts right by their actions. Now, what the Holy Spirit has also come to convict us about is judgment. It says in John chapter 16, verse 11, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So Jesus had died on the cross and after three days he had resurrected. So therefore he had achieved the salvation of God that was to be given to all believers. So by the fact that Jesus had risen from the dead, he had risen in victory and he sat down, he sits down at the throne of God, shows that judgment has been given upon the world. The judgment of God has been given upon the world. Jesus was lifted to the highest place in heaven after his death on the cross. Jesus was exalted. Jesus was exalted to the highest place above every other name. And he was, he was exalted to the highest place in heaven. This shows that God has given his conviction, he has given his judgment. So we can see, we can see all this by what Jesus has done, by the character of Jesus. He can, we can see that this is the righteousness of God that has prevailed. The righteousness of God prevails over everything. So, although there may be those people, th those people who work terrible thing, 
who work terrible things against the church. They cause great trouble against the church. We must know that the righteousness of God will stand forever. And this is the final decisive factor of everything. So when the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, rather we should accept his conviction in our hearts and we should tremble and fear and we should understand the reality that we face that we have no hope we have no ability to save ourselves we are in complete we are in a completely terrible situation we have no way to save ourselves except through jesus it is by questioning whether we are even worthy of the righteousness of jesus whether we are really worthy of being saved now it says that the Holy Spirit had come to bring his judgment against that the Holy Spirit had come to give his judgment against the world in regard also to judgment so it says in John chapter 12 verse 31 now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be cast out so when Jesus was crucified on the cross simultaneously at the same time the power of death was broken into pieces in essence the ruler of this world was cast out he was he was cast out of all of his authority it says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death that is the devil so all of a sudden we can see that the authority of the devil was broken into pieces by the triumph of Jesus over the cross so although the whole world tries to judge God yet those who are judged by God will face true judgment but the whole but the devil still roams back and forth in the world until the final day comes not all of his work will disappear he is he is still pretending he is still pretending to be king over this world this is why we should not be deceived yet he knows that the devil knows in his heart that judgment is coming but those who do not understand this will still fall victim to sin and they will be deceived by sin. So it tells us, he tells of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. What this means is that the ruler of this world has been judged and he will be judged. So if he did not come out of his influence, you also will join in being judged along with the devil. So he tells us, don't you realize that you used to be slaves to sin and that this sin once led you to hell? Don't you remember that you used to be instruments to satisfy sin? Yet we know that Satan's judgment, that the judgment against Satan has been passed. So if Satan has fallen under judgment from God, the whole world will fall under judgment from God. So, the Holy Spirit proclaims that the devil has been judged and that the whole world along with him will also be judged. So, as we have come upon this day and we commemorate the coming of the Holy Spirit upon this world, we are reminded about the love of God and this way has been opened up for us. So, we understand that Jesus has promised to send us the Holy Spirit who will safely bring us into the kingdom of heaven. So, we are so grateful for what the Holy Spirit is doing for the Church of Christ. So, since we give thanks in this way, 
We know and commemorate the fact that the Holy Spirit was sent to us. So let us reconfirm these truths together and understand that we can live forever. So it is on this hope that we believe in the Holy Spirit that He will bring us safely into the Kingdom of Heaven. So, let us all become genuine believers in Jesus so that the truth of the Gospel can be proclaimed by all of us since we are all ministers of God and therefore, by doing this, let us receive the assistance and encouragement from the Holy Spirit so that we can walk step by step along with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspires us again and again and whenever the Holy Spirit gives us his conviction let us bow down humbly in obedience and accept these truths God will never forgive those who are not humble but those who are humble God will lift up the Holy Spirit will come upon all the humble believers in Jesus and this is what I encourage you in the name of Jesus hallelujah let us be a church full of the Holy Spirit and full of all that authority to vanquish the power of the devil. And in this way, we can remain clean and drive out all evil from before us. Now let us pray. So God is the Savior of our hearts, the Savior of our souls. So let us entrust ourselves to Him and appeal that He would help us. God is the one who convicts us of the evil and the sin in our hearts. So let us, let us appeal to that sacrifice that God has done for all of us. Now let us all pray together. Holy God our Father, we pray that all those who have heard your word today may accept these words as not coming from man, but as coming from God. We pray that all who hear this word today will not just let these words pass away, but we pray that these words would rest in all of their hearts and that God would work powerfully upon their hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we can be, can be used as instruments for God and that God's eternal love and grace may always remain upon us forever. And, let, and we also pray that we may understand you even better so that we can be able to please you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let us, let us rise to give praise to God. He has given us so many gifts. He has given us all kinds of gifts in various situations and He helps us. These are the gifts that God has given. Since God gives us these grace and gifts, let us pray that God, let us sing praise that God will help us even more. <laughs> Oh, 
언제든지 변찮고 보호해 주시네 주여 성령의 은사들을 오늘도 내려 주소서 성령의 뜨거운 불길로서 오늘도 충만케 앞서서 정욕과 죄악에 물든 맘을 성령의 불길로 태우사 성결케 앞서서 태우소서 깨끗게 하여 주옵소서 주여 성령의 은사들을 Holy God, our Father, we pray that on this day in which we commemorate the coming of the Holy Spirit, we will now perform this offering of thanksgiving to you. We pray that you would accept our offerings and would bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us sit down and prepare our offerings to the Lord.
하나님 아버지 Holy God our Father 오늘 성령 강림 감사 주일을 맞아요 We pray that on this day in which we commemorate the coming of the Holy Spirit, we pray that all those families who are given their dedicated offerings to you will be blessed by you, since they have shown the, the actions coming from their faith. We pray that all who have given their thanks to you, to all individuals who have given their offerings in various ways, may accept your blessings in full effect. And we pray that these believers and families may continually await the great blessings and reward that you promised to give them on that final day so that, so that you could pour out your grace and blessings upon them even more. We pray in the name of blessings. Amen. May all who have given their earnest offerings of faith be filled with the grace and blessings and guidance of God. Hallelujah. Now let us rise to give the final invocation. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon all those who honorably commemorate the coming of the Holy Spirit May it be upon them and their families and upon all the Baryans around the world forever. Amen. 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 So from today until the final day of the United Council, I, I ask that we all join together in diligent prayer to God so that God will save our church from the current critical situations that we are facing today. It is not our duty to be to be lazy or self-centered. Rather, we focus on no other thing except uniting to carry out that single motive that God has given us to do as a church. It is for this purpose that we are on earth. And when God performs His work upon us, we unite to achieve this righteousness of God and God will remember our efforts. God will remember our work and God will be most pleased with us. So let us join together for this work of God so that we can participate in this great glory together. It is for this great achievement that we should all participate in. So let us not let any enemy come to disrupt us or to block our path, but rather let us unite and walk this single path together as one church. Let us endure together. Let us all receive strength from God. This is what I encourage you to do in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. One more final note. Let us all continue to meet in the united service that will soon take place in a few hours later. Let us continue to pray together with all our hearts that God will fulfill His good purpose in us. Let us all be diligent to attend the evening service. Thank you very much. <laughs>